Hello everyone and welcome to not one but two incredible games from the Julius Bar Generation Cup. Uh, first one we are going to show is Fabiano Corwana versus Magnus Carlsen and then we are going to show you what happened in the match Alireza Firuja versus Wesley. So uh, let's dive straight into it. Uh, like I said both games are incredible and uh, I don't want to uh, spoil anything before we enjoy the move. So uh, Fabi has the white pieces and he opens with c4 and uh, uh, wait till you see this opening. Pawn to g6 by Magnus he goes for the uh, so-called great snake variation against the English we have pawn to e4 and now knight to f6 and uh, incredible as it is already as of move 2 we have a completely new game. Uh, that's when we're talking about classical games. Of course, there are some games that reach this um, uh, position that were played online, uh, but I'm not really interested in those. So, okay, pawn to e5 uh, in the spirit, uh, you know, how you would play uh, against, uh, let's say, the Alejin defense, a knight to h5, and now pawn to d4. And now look at this. Uh, Fabi has the beautiful center, and the Magnus has a knight on h5, because why not? But okay, uh, we all know what that means. He will try to undermine Fabi's strong center, much like you would... Um, uh, white strong center in the Alejin's defense. So d6 and pawn to f4, uh, bishop to h6. And this is the position that we should discuss because already it could be considered a critical position. Now, how you should play this, and I've actually allowed the engine to really crunch the numbers here up to some move uh, depth uh, 45, uh, you should just give up the pawn. You should play knight to c3 and go for the initiative. And after bishop captures on f4, bishop captures and knight captures, you just play e captures, and after queen captures, you play queen d2 uh, and prepare queenside castles. Uh, black will play pawn to c6 to stop pawn, uh, pawn to d5. Queenside castles, and we have uh, castles on opposite sides. Most likely, black will castle kingside, and then you will go after the black king. So this is how this should be played, and the engine says, yes, the pawn sacrifice is the only way to play this. However, Fabi tried to defend with pawn to g3 as it also looks very nice but it just uh, allows magnus to uh, trade everything off and go straight into a much better end game for him so he played d captures on e5 uh, d captures and queen captures on d1 king captures and now knight to c6 we have bishop to d2 by fabi and bishop to f5 we have bishop to g2 and now queen side castles inviting fabi to capture on c6 uh, but it will also mean that he will have to give up his bishop pair. So he just moves the king, king to e1, you have to unpin here, and now comes knight to d4. And already you can feel that Magnus's pieces are too deep in Fabi's position, knight to c2 already being the threat. So knight to a3, and now we have pawn to f6, challenging white strong center, knight to f3, developing and defending, and now bishop to e4. Uh, and here you would love the castle, but you can't, uh, you know, it's very easy to get rid of the knight and then just pick up the bishop on d2. So rook to f1 instead, and now bishop captures on f3. We have bishop captures, and now f captures on e5. And this is what um, uh, we, we always say when we, I mean, what, when we say that uh, you have to undermine white center, because now Fabi cannot capture back. Uh, the problem is if you capture back, it's the exact same idea. Bishop captures on d2 with check, king captures, and now a nice double discovery check. Now, uh, from the knight and from the rook you lose a piece and of course the game so fabi has to resort to bishop captures on h5 g captures and now play rook to d1 so the bishop is nicely defended magnus piles up on the f pawn with rook h to f8 and now bishop to c3 and here magnus goes for rook to f5 uh, and fabi has to uh, really figure out how to play this you could continue with pawn to b4 as you could in pretty much any position uh, but uh, the the key move is uh, F captures on E5 if you want to blunder the game. So this was not played. I'm just going to show you why it cannot be played and why Fabi played the move that he did. Now, uh, Rook captures on E5 check would be played King F2, Rook E2 check, King to G1, and now Knight to F3 with check. And now you're getting checkmated whatever you play. If King to H1, then Rook captures on H2 is checkmate. And if you capture, of course, Rook captures on D1 is check, Rook to F1, and now a very nice Bishop to E3 check, forcing the White King to step away from the Rook. King H1 and Rook captures on F1 will be checkmate. Uh, so after rook f5, uh, Fabi played rook to f2, he gave the f1 square to the king, and now uh, uh, f captures on e5 is what Fabi wants to play next. So Magnus played pawn to h4, uh, f captures, and rook captures on e5. But now it's not checkmate, Fabi plays king to f1, uh, bishop to e3 going after the rook, and the rook to f7. Very, very active rook um, uh, on the 7th rank for Fabi. But now h captures on g3, h captures, and rook to f5. Of course, Magnus will not allow this rook to, um, you know, reach 
wreak havoc uh, on the seventh rank so rook captures knight captures and now rook captures on d8 uh, king captures now king to e2 uh, going after the bishop but now comes bishop to d4 and the problem is magnus won a pawn in uh, uh, all, all that madness on the king side and uh, now he's forcing further trades which will only be better for him the problem is you cannot play something like g4 because then just bishop captures on c3 threatening to capture another pawn and once you capture he will just go back now you're not just down a pawn you're down a pawn and have a double c pawn which is terrible so instead after bishop d4 fabi has to trade bishop captures knight captures and now king to e3 and knight to c6 we have a knight end game and magnus is up a pawn and he does have the past e pawn so let's see how he plays this we have knight to b5 king to d7 now comes knight to c3 we have king to e6 and now knight to b5 fabi goes after the pawns here but just king to f5 not even worried about uh defending this pawn here uh, as he wants uh to take this pawn and of course his knight wants to grab the pawns on the queen side so fabi does capture it there's no uh, better move uh, and now uh king to g4 we have king to f2 defending the g3 pawn but now knight to b4 threatening the a2 pawn and if you play a3 of course knight to d3 check will pick up the b2 pawn so fabi defends uh, the uh, b pawn instead uh, at least it will not give him uh, more pawn islands so knight captures on a2 and now knight to d5 goes after the e7 pawn but now pawn to a5 and uh, okay uh, you could go after the uh, e7 pawn but then comes knight to c1 you lose the b3 pawn and then the a pawn marches forward and becomes a queen so instead knight to e3 check we have king to h3 and now knight to f1 uh, we have knight to c1 magnus goes after the b3 pawn uh, knight to d2 fabi defends it we have king to g4 and now king to g2 and the problem is now the knight is stuck guarding the b3 pawn and the king is stuck guarding the g3 pawn and now uh fabi can uh cannot move anything you can't move the knight and the only thing you can do with the king is move it king f1 king g2 king f2 king g2 uh, it's not uh, you know a great way to live but uh, you know you, you have no choices here so h5 now comes king f2 pawn to e5 and now king to g2 and now even pawn to e4 of course if you capture the knight capture some b3 creates a pass pawn so fabi is forced to repeat but now even pawn to e3 with check uh, you don't have to play this but it's um you know a, a fine way to end the game king captures on g3 knight to e4 check and now king to g2 now comes king to d2 attacking the knight but now knight captures on b3 check we have king to c3 attacking the knight but here magnus just played pawn to h4 and he was in this position on move 46 that fabiano corwana resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here uh, the problem is once you go let's say knight g5 to sacrifice the knight for the pawn of course uh, magnus will not allow that he will play knight to c5 and after king to d4 uh, attacking the knight he will play pawn to a4 now if you capture the knight this pawn becomes a queen so king back to c3 but now king to g3 now you will kick away the knight and after king to b4 now you'll just play b6 so there's really no good move here king c3 now a3 now b3 and b2 are covered by the knight and pawn so the king has to go all the all the way around uh king g4 and after knight to f7 now you just play h3 and of course there is no defense against against two connected pass pawns, two connected outside pass pawns. So of course, uh, Fabi knew this and uh, on move uh, 46, he resigned. And basically, uh, I mean, how do you play this against uh, a former 2800 players like Fabi? Look at this position. This was uh, Magnus's position. Uh, and it, it, like I said, this was the critical position. It all came down to this uh, when um, uh, this bishop to h6 move was played. He attacked the f4 pawn and Fabi thought, all right, it's, I mean, it's a silly move that Magnus is playing. Let's just defend it. And here, I believe that this was the position where he just lost the thread of the game and where Magnus just took over. Uh, but that's the and the first game that we are going to show uh, from the semifinals as Magnus has defeated Fabi and he's in the finals of the uh, USB Generation Cup uh, of the winner section. And now we are going to check out what happened in the game. Uh, Wesley Sol versus Alireza Firuja. Uh, let me just... Uh, oops, sorry, not that. Uh, you, not that. Uh, sorry, this is... Uh, I have to... Uh, add the other one uh, just give me a few seconds or you can you know uh fast forward uh where is the one where is the one there it is uh there we go all right sorry about that there we go all right now now you see how it's done so it's Alireza with the white pieces, Wesley with black, and also just the incredible attacking game. You guys will really enjoy this one. It's a really quick one. 
So let's check it out. Alireza has uh, uh, placed pawn to e4. We have uh, pawn to e5, knight f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. So a standard Rui Lopez, nothing spectacular. a6, Morphe's defense, bishop to a4, and now knight to f6. Uh, we have castles and bishop to e7. Uh, we have a pawn to d3 and pawn to b5. Again, we've seen this many, many times. Bishop to b3, d6, and now pawn to c3. Bring up the c2 square for the bishop if needed. Also preparing pawn to d4. Uh, we have castles and h3. We have rook to e8. And now comes rook to e1. h6. And now pawn to a4. So again, all been played before. Uh, we have rook to b8. And now a captures on b5. We have a captures on b5. And now pawn to d4. Striking in the center. Bishop to f8. And now pawn to d5. Uh, grabbing more space in the center. Chasing away the knight. We have knight to e7. And now bishop to a e3. And here, uh, a very peculiar move happens that um, uh, you should not play, but I guess Wesley tried it uh, as, a, as a surprise as this is rapid time format. Knight captures on e4. And now, okay, you can play it, but uh, if, uh, if played uh, well, uh, black doesn't really get all that much. Alireza plays bishop to a7. And it looks like, okay, what is this? Uh, you're attacking the rook and also the knight on e4 is hanging. Uh, rook to a8 and Alireza grabs the knight with rook captures um, on e4. But now comes bishop to f5, attacking the rook. And what would you play here? Well, the problem with moving the rook back and saying, okay, I'm just up a piece, is that you're not up a piece. If knight to c8, your bishop is hanging now. And if you move it, then the rook on a1 hangs. So you can't just uh, move the rook back. So instead, after bishop to f5, knight to b2 was played, uh, knight to b to d2, uh, and uh, now just bishop captures on e4. Okay, you win the exchange, knight captures, and now queen to c8. But basically, you have a rook for two pieces. Uh, we have pawn to g4 by Alireza. We have queen to b... Sorry, not there. Uh, queen to b7, now uh, preparing to capture the bishop, and now bishop to e3. By playing this uh, knight uh, b to d2 move, uh, Alireza also made sure that his queen defends the rook on a1. So, okay, rook captures on a1, queen captures on a1, and now knight captures on d5. And now what's the problem with Wesley's idea? Uh, why doesn't this work? Well, this is only the first pause the video moment of the game. So feel free to pause the video and try to find what uh, Wesley missed while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this uh, wild idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Bishop captures on h6. That's the move. And it looks like a really weird move. But then once you see it, you cannot unsee it. Bishop captures on h6 was played. And of course, Wesley cannot touch the bishop. If he takes the bishop, then look at his bishop captures on d5. And now you see what happened. If queen captures knight f6, check picks up the queen. So of course, after bishop captures on h6, Wesley has to play something. And the best way to play this is to ignore the bishop altogether. Just play c5, uh, c4, and okay, the game continues. Nothing. Uh, the bishop has to go back. And okay, let's say bishop to d2, c4, bishop comes to c2. Uh, you, you lost the h3 pawn, h6 pawn, but the game continues. However, uh, after bishop captures on h6, Wesley played knight to f6, and now Alireza goes in for the kill. Knight captures, we have g captures, and now his position is completely winning, but only if you find one move that is so ridiculous to find, uh, especially in a rapid game. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I mean, of course, not for, for players uh, of, of their strength, but if you found this, then, I mean, uh, truly you are a, an incredible, incredible player. So feel free to pause the video and win the game for Alireza while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, and I imagine all of you were able to do it, congratulations, I expected no less. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to b1. That's the idea. Of course, the bishop controls this diagonal. The f7 pawn basically does not exist. So by playing queen to b1, you are preparing queen to g6 check, and there is no way to stop it as the king cannot go here and the king cannot go here. So queen to b1, uh, absolutely crushing. And now, if you even if you capture the bishop, doesn't work because queen to g6 check uh, and now if you go bishop to g7 just the uh, queen captures on f7 with check and now if king to h8 of course queen to h5 check uh, bishop to h6 and this will now be checkmate the bishop covers g8 and if you don't go to h8 uh, if you go to h7 which is a little bit better doesn't really matter still queen h5 check you have to block with the bishop now comes queen to f5 with check 
king to g7 and now queen to d7 with check again you nicely connect with the rook so there was no way to avoid that king h8 queen captures king to h7 and queen to g8 will be checkmate so doesn't matter what you do so after queen b1 Wesley said, all right, I will just close this diagonal. So nothing really happens here. But now Alireza plays bishop captures on f8. Uh, king captures and now knight to d4. And okay, you survived a little bit, but it's still bishop and knight versus rook. And your king uh, side is completely messed up. Uh, pawn to d5, but now knight to f5. Nicely controlling these squares. And now the queen is going in for the kill. Uh, we have rook to e5, now comes queen to c1. So imagine this uh, this attack, uh, I mean, uh, flourishing by, by Areza playing queen to b1 followed by queen to c1. That's, I mean, that's some, uh, those are some fancy queen moves. Uh, king to e8, now comes uh, queen to h6. Of course, you go um, for the black king. Queen to a6, uh, this queen to a6 is a very deep idea. Uh, not just that it defends the f6 pawn, but also uh, you will see. Uh, so queen to h7, now comes pawn to e3. Uh, we have queen to g8 with check, and now king to d7. Queen captures an f7 with check, king to c8, and now a knight captures an e3. And Wesley, this was the idea behind queen to a6, now plays rook captures an e3. And his idea is that if pawn captures, then he has queen to a1 with check, and if king g2, then queen captures and b2 check will pick up the bishop as well. And okay, objectively, the endgame is still winning for Alireza. He has the outside past h pawn, uh, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a queen and pawn endgame. Maybe you can still force your opponent to blunder at least a little bit. Uh, but Alireza, of course, did not fall for this. He played queen to g8 with check. Now, regardless of where you uh, place the king, queen captures on d5 will come with check. So uh, king to b7 was played. Queen captures on d5 with check. Pawn to c6 and now queen to d7 with check. King to b8. We have f captures on e3. Now it's perfectly fine as both the queen and the bishop control the d1 square. Wesley did give up one check, but now bishop to d1. The queen defends it. And of course, there is no more uh, way to play this. You could capture a pawn, but then queen captures on c6 and you're just down a full piece. There's no way to play this. Uh, so yeah, very nicely done by... Uh, Alireza uh, defeating Wesley So uh, like this and also Ali uh, Magnus and defeating Fabiano Caruana that means that Alireza will face Magnus Carlsen in the finals and uh, well as usual it will be a true battle for the future now uh, I also have the standings here so uh, sorry about that no idea why uh, this happened oh yeah I have an idea why this happened uh, there you have it. Those are the uh, the results of day two. So uh, Magnus defeated Fabiano with a score of two and a half to one and a half. So he started by winning the first two games, and the third game was won by Fabi, but uh, the fourth game uh, was uh, a draw. That means that Magnus wins two and a half to one and a half. And Wesley so same result against Alireza, uh, only it uh, resulted by three draws, and then Alireza lost the fourth game. This is the fourth game uh, that we've just shown. So two and a half to one and a half, both of them, and now they will face each other to see who will be uh, the winner of the winners section of the uh, uh of the uh, Julius Bar generation cup uh so yeah uh that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it uh, both of them uh very nicely done I mean that uh, weird weird move uh, from Magnus where you he basically forces Fabi to sacrifice a pawn into a better position but Fabi I guess he didn't know about the position and he just defended the pawn and it was enough for Magnus to completely take over the game. And Alireza just, uh, you know, found two, two, two <laughs> brilliant tactics here after knight captures on d5. He immediately spots bishop captures on h6, which is already unpleasant. But then after you see this position with g captures on, uh, on f6 and Alireza plays queen to b1, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, you, you, you I'm pretty sure Wesley was just, uh, disgusted with himself when he saw a queen to b1 uh so i yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed both of the games uh, I, I i truly enjoyed them and i'm very happy to show you what will happen in the finals uh, i would like to thank gersney chess festival.org.gg uh, india moon india is the best uh, crazy dave and crazier dave for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you for watching and i will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.